Obamacare has been a target for Donald Trump on the campaign trail today. Watch. The rates are going through the sky. We all knew that. I knew it before it was passed. I've been saying this for a long time. My first day in office, I'm going to ask Congress to put a bill on my desk getting rid of this disastrous law and replacing it with reforms that expand choice, freedom, affordability. You're going to have such great health care at a tiny fraction of the cost, and it's going to be so easy. So how and when did the president's signature law get into this posture? Joining me now is former Fox News chief Washington correspondent who covered this issue, my old friend Jim Angle. Jim, nice to see you. Thank you, Brett. I was just thinking, you know, as we were watching that report from Peter Barnes on, the, on that map, which for some places is really pretty alarming, um, is, is this sort of uh, vicious downward spiral, is this represent a failure or just what some of the backers of this law actually wanted to happen? Well, you know, Zeke Emanuel, who advised the president on health care, predicted that 80% of employer-provided insurance would disappear. And a Wall Street research firm predicted that 90% would disappear. Now, if employer-provided insurance disappears, there's only one other choice if government is going to direct it. And clearly, Hillary Clinton is headed in the direction of single payer. So that's, well, it, it's a little hard to believe that this was an intentional collapse, though. Or, or is it? Well, they, want, they predicted that employer-provided insurance would disappear because of things in Obamacare. That were good. Well, not necessarily, including the Cadillac tax, which is a 40% penalty right. on the kinds of plans that union members enjoy. 40% right. tax means no one's going to offer them because right. no one will pay that. Right. Now, worse than the numbers you saw in Peter's piece are the numbers for young people. For young people, 27-year-olds, the ones who are just coming off their parents' plans, Right. In Arizona, the rates are going to go up 116 percent. They'll go up 69 percent in Oklahoma, 63 uh, percent in Tennessee, 59 percent in Minnesota. Arizona, of course, 116 percent was high. And if you don't have a plan, you have to pay it. It'll, and you know, your taxes are higher. Right. right? It'll right. be in the form of higher taxes. That's correct. Right. So there is an inducement to get a plan, even at these rates. But the, the penalty is not nearly as expensive as the premiums. So this means people won't buy them. And right? especially for young people who don't use health care very much. And even if you have a plan, a kind of a basic plan, which is, I guess, is kind of the most popular plan, the d deductibles are so high that I guess for many people who are relatively healthy, there are no, you know, no d discernible benefits, right? Well, the median income of people who get subsidies is about $40,000. Right. You have to spend $5,000 out of pocket before you get a single dollar of coverage. Now, for a family that makes 40000 gross, uh, $5,000 out of pocket before you get any coverage at all is much. an enormous sum. Yeah, it's not worth much. No. I mean, basically, you're... You're basically, for nearly all your medical expenses, you're uninsured. Right. And you have narrow networks. They have one-third fewer specialists than typical employer-provided pl plans. Right. They're very narrow. You can't, fewer and fewer hospitals are participating. So it is really a dwindling source of providers and an increasing number of people who are, you know, demanding the service. Now, let's assume this plays out and we get to next year and assuming just as, as the polls are right, Hillary Clinton's elected and she wants to move to single payer. Uh, obviously, there'd be re resistance from Republicans in the House of Representatives. Would there be other sources of resistance? There well could be. Chuck Schumer famously said that uh, President Obama made a mistake by going after health care because 85 percent of people had health care they already liked. That was true, yeah. Yeah, and that he should have gone after jobs first. Right. Now, the advantage to that was that people would get employer-provided insurance, but the administration was predicting that their plan would eliminate 80 percent of employer-provided insurance. That doesn't cost the government anything. And where, will the, and where will the unions come out on this if they move toward single payer? The unions were already iffy about this. Uh, the SEIU, the Service Employers, uh, Service Employees, Union, one of the biggest, wrote a paper a couple of years ago saying Obamacare, colon, making inequality worse. Oh, wow. And so they were already very skeptical of this. If the President Clinton, if she becomes president, were to go for single payer, the unions would be in an uproar. And I think it's. So could you'd, have a, you'd, have a, you'd have, a, have a unity between unions and Republicans. <laughs> exactly. And I think it could spell the end of union support for the Democrats because the unions enjoy very good health care. Right. They would not 
under Obamacare or whatever succeeds it. Jim, thank you very much. Thank you.